Good morning, afternoon, uh, depending where you are. Um, thanks for finding the time today. I am um, quite grateful uh, for the opportunity to speak today, and I am very excited to see quite a few people uh, joining the webinar. So, uh, what are we going to do today? I am going to uh, run through very quick introductions of uh, who I am and uh, why I'm talking to this topic today, um, and uh, we'll I might have a little bit of a of an issue with the platform. This is my first uh, bright talk, so bear with me. Hopefully, all is good. Anyway, um, I work for Kebula, uh, and we help with data project projects around the world. I've been leading the uh, consulting part of the company for um, about five years now. Um, and uh, the main thing Kebula does is to build a uh, platform called Kebula Connection, which um, basically organizes and handles everything in the back end of data projects. Our mission in life is to make uh, data projects easy. Um, I've been in data for my whole career, something something about uh, 20 years. So I'm a partner at Kebula at the moment. The first database um, I worked with was DB3, if I, if I remember correctly. I don't know if some of you uh, remember. <laughs> And uh, I obviously haven't seen it all. There is so much uh, in this space happening, especially especially in the last few years. Um, but uh, I made a lot of mistakes, and I hope I learned from them, and hopefully uh, I'll be able to uh, share some of that today. Uh, I would love to know who's out there. I um, uh, got some preliminary list uh, with some demographics, but there really isn't all that much. So I did uh, start a um, little poll on the side of sort of uh, roles of, you know, what is it what people are doing? I have about three quick polls. I just started one. I hope you'll see, see it there. It would be extremely helpful. I'd be very much very grateful if you were to just click what you know role is the closest to you, and um, maybe that will allow me to make the rest of the conversation a little more relevant to you. So it's in your own interest to uh, introduce yourself anonymously. Uh, I know it's an oxymoron, but uh, that's what we have. Thank you very much. I already see some clicks coming through there. So what we're going to do today. Um, uh, the first part I call drawing the line, so I'll just do a little sort of philosophical <laughs> talk on uh, this space, just so you know where I'm coming from and what is the, you know, what is the, the behind my thinking here, uh, to give you a context for the rest. Um, the second part is really going to be a few do's and don'ts uh, from uh, my experience. Uh, I'll be throwing those um, uh, at a relatively random and hopefully relatively fast pace, and uh, I'm hoping to leave uh, plenty of room for questions. Even though I am planning to keep a um, question section towards the end, please do not hesitate uh, to use the question section during the time if I uh, notice it, if I can do anything, uh, I will just jump. Happy to make a segue. Happy to happy to improvise a little bit. So, um, when you start a project in the BI space, or the trigger usually is um, the dashboards. Somebody gets sold on the idea of uh, either KPI dashboards or analytical dashboards. And that's what the user wants, right? That's what uh, that's what uh, unlocks the budget. That's the visible part. Uh, that's very often the first thing that gets sold to the organization. Um, uh, what doesn't really help is that uh, the salespeople in those organizations are really, really good at uh, hiding or avoiding uh, the complexity uh, of the, what's actually ahead in the project uh, until the contracts get signed, and this goes you know, across uh, the various players um, in the in the field. We've seen it again and again. The POCs will get built on a, you know, single dashboard and, uh, uh, oh, sorry, on single uh, Excel sheet. And um, of course, you know, uh, once we make the real implementation, we can connect it to the live data sources and it will be the same and it will be just as fast 
then you know the contracts get signed uh, and uh, the project starts and the reality hits um, quite often um, the reality is that most of the work which goes into the project especially and this is kind of a good thing from the point of view of the visualization platforms because the visualization platforms especially the top ones got so efficient uh, and so uh, the, the productivity in that space improved so rapidly that uh, really majority of the work is in the data prep it's behind the scenes it's in things people don't see and uh, you know it's not pretty often um, this is really ugly slide for a reason and that is uh, just to show that really the bi platform and even the business logic because that changes too over time is just the tip of the iceberg everything behind it the integration the data warehouse layer or, or block uh, whatever you need for ETL to make sure that those uh, you know data structures are talking to each other um, enrichment if there's something you're doing to the data which is beyond what the uh, tools are providing you uh, think uh, statistical analysis uh, now we are starting to see it in some of the VI tools but uh, that's not enriching of the data that's enriching the analysis um, think uh, natural language processing perhaps it's a very good example or some stuff we just cannot be calculated uh, while the uh, while the data is being consumed it's you know heavy some AI stuff you know uh, feature engineering things like that which uh, sort of needs to happen on their own time and make sure that it's ready for the uh, for the uh, consumption uh, within the two As a result, you know, data prep is not popular. Salespeople don't like to talk about it. Um, uh, quite often, um, we see big chunk of the overall budget, which uh, was there for solving the problem, um, flowing to the BI tool, and then uh, a panic ensues, and uh, the project starts get building using, you know, subpar tools because there just isn't much left. And then, as a result, very often we see that investment into the BI tool to go stale for months and months because there is just no data ready for that to allow it to shine. So it's uh, extremely important to be thinking about uh, that in those sort of bimodal um, ways. So say not only how do I want to consume the data, but also how is it going to get to the point where it can be consumed in the first place. Um, for context, I want to cover a couple of terms. And again, this is more about how I'm thinking about it, because obviously everything here are my opinions. Uh, there's no uh, safe harbor statement here. I'm not doing anything forward looking, but you know, ultimately this is how I think about, about these things when we are implementing projects and we are helping our customers. And, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and again, the more you know about how I think, the more the rest hopefully is going to make sense. Um, so this is big, and uh, like Big Mac, you know, big data is is a marketing term, is a label, uh, and uh, one which I hate quite a bit. Uh, it's uh, as you know, overused. It's everywhere, um, and very often it uh, is completely devoid of meaning. Um, uh, again, especially with what happened in the last uh, few years in the development of the tools uh, which you can use, um, very often really um, what is big uh, today is not going to be big tomorrow. The Moore's law is on your side, um, especially in the business data. Obviously, IoT and social media is creating their own streams and their own, uh, their own uh, data creation, but even that uh, can be handled with some of the modern uh, SQL tools without having to go to a lake. Um, again, this is a lake. It's a pretty picture, and uh, as, as this one uh, from a uh, uh, tourist uh, brochure <laughs> of some sort. Um, that's, again, very, very similar. The idea of the data lake, you know, of the unstructured data, you dump data there, and then you worry about it later. Uh, sounded really good um, for uh, situations where, uh, again, you know, we are going back to uh, 2006, you know, and Hadoop uh, sort of found its identity. 
um, the uh, there wasn't wasn't an alternative to data it was uh, you know growing way too, way too quickly and the structures were way 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 too complicated but again um, uh, I do believe that it's a little bit of a dead branch on the evolutionary tree of the database systems <coughs> excuse me uh, because unless uh, except for some very very specific use cases you're just fine with uh, structured databases with maybe some support for semi-structured data in there um, but there are very very few uh, cases I came across where uh, there really be a justification for a uh, sort of a hammer of this size uh, compared to what we can do today with something much more <laughs> natural and simpler to simpler to implement so the next section are some warnings. Uh, I haven't seen any questions yet. This might be a good time if uh, uh, I can add a little more flavor and uh, a little more context um, to what we're doing. So again, please don't hesitate to, uh, to jump in. If you uh, have a feeling that I repeat myself, I might do it a couple of times because some of the points are important and some of the sort of root causes of uh, the symptoms we're seeing in the marketplace are shared uh, between many. So I might be coming back uh, to some of the, uh, some of the, the topics. Um, not only does the choice of the BI tool um, affect the, um, rest of the project, um, which it shouldn't, um, in reality, uh, both on the budget side and on the, uh, uh, on the what is it what we're doing, the issue is that people get really focused on that particular type of the data consumption. And now I'm not necessarily talking to the tool, but just to the fact that it's, it's going to be consumed by a dashboard and uh, um, that there is a model uh, drives a lot of architectural decisions, which really risks um, or creates a risk or creates a danger of designing yourself in the corner and l later finding out, oh my goodness, you know, it would be great if we could do this, but you know, that's not something we, that's not something we talk, talked ahead and now this whole part of the architecture is not, uh, is not conducive to that. So really it's not about the dashboards. Start with the data. That's what. That's where the point is. What can we do to uh, prepare and uh, process and store and make the data available for any type of consumption that can come that can come later? Because it could be a different BI tool. It would be. It could be different uh, model of uh, consuming the data. You know, from internal um, analytics suddenly to data products, which is obviously a huge thing. Um, these days, uh, and whether that is again takes the shape of uh, embedded analytics, or whether that takes shape of some kind of enterprise data feed or intercontact uh, connectivity between companies, the, again the underlying requirements for data health, for governance around it, for uh, you know access management and the processes which are uh, which are working on the data that remains the same. So why to uh, build each one of those verticals separately, where we can have a solid data foundation and uh, use it to feed um, any type of data consumption which uh, either we are aware of today or we're not. Um, you know, we learn about a new tool with some exciting feature literally on a weekly basis. It's, you know, crazy. Um, so um, designing for a particular type of consumption uh, is, a, is a very, very dangerous path. Um, Outside of the BI, uh, but, uh, BI space, think about use cases where the data actually flows back to the processes. Um, one of the very common is, uh, you know, we pull data from CRM and, you know, some customer behavior, and uh, we use a predictive model to uh, figure out, you know, the expected purchasing behavior of these customers over the next month or two, or, you know, whatever that would be. That's obviously, uh, excellent case uh, for BI to have thusly enriched data for whether it's for, you know, procurement or capacity planning or cash flow, you know, or whatever that is. Uh, whoever is the user of the dashboard at the end, uh, this is all extremely valuable. But if we focus on the dashboard, we miss the bigger opportunity, which is what if we take this data, which we already processed, we already invested, we already have that information, 
and we feed it back into the CRM and we can start driving a marketing process based on whether the customer is on pace with their normal uh, uh, buying behavior or not. And again, that's a, a analytical use case, but not terminating in the dashboard. The, the consumption of the data, even though there is a person on, in each end of the data, uh, is uh, back in the primary system. It's actually driving some processes, sometimes even automatic ones, so without, without human involvement. Uh, marketing campaigns are a fantastic example. Again, you know, we can be analyzing uh, data from multiple sources of customers' behaviors to figure out what would be the campaign uh, which uh, would uh, be the right thing at the right time for them. And then uh, the same platform which drives the marketing dashboards and, uh, you know, the KPIs around that uh, could be driving, uh, you know, I don't know, IBM Silverpaw or um, MailChimp or exact targets to actually run those campaigns based on the uh, pre-calculated um, findings. So the uh, three take takeaways, please separate prep and consumption. Don't do one for the other. Um, it is uh, it is extremely important to be thinking about the data asset on its own and what we can do for them. Think multiple destinations. Um, it's not the tool which was chosen today. Uh, it will change. Um, it will evolve itself. Uh, it will be probably complemented by others. And uh, um, uh, very often uh, you find yourself in the use cases which go beyond BI because once you invest into the data in this way, um, the opportunities open themselves to uh, for the data to be used differently in the organization. Um, a little bit of a rant on the same thing. Obviously, the data prep is a foundation of the uh, of the project. Uh, whether we'll use the garbage in garbage out analogy, uh, the fact is. If we have this beautiful, um, you know, set of dashboards built in whatever, uh, and um, the stuff behind the scenes is not done right, it will start crumbling down. Uh, the quality will suffer. The user engagement will suffer. It's a big thing because uh, if uh, we cannot develop trust with the users, if the feed feedback loop is not positive on cons uh, consumption of the data. Um, uh, again, it goes down very, very quickly, uh, and uh, inevitably, um, uh, the project goes down over time. So important thing, resource properly. Uh, make sure that uh, when the project uh, uh, is being set off, we're not just focused on uh, that visible layer, uh, which is much easier for the organizations to spend on, because the ROI is, is visible, we know what we get. Um, while the the stuff on the back end is uh, something that needs to get done in order for that to happen. Obviously, ensure scalability, that's a huge thing. Um, uh, is what we are building today um, ready to grow and change uh, and evolve as the company does? Uh, again, we have now tools which allow for that. We don't have to you know, build a massive uh, on-premise data warehouse and you know buy things we don't need today. The cloud obviously allows us to uh, be completely um, elastic with the demand. You know we at Kebula are using the same tool set regardless of whether we are looking at 20 gigabytes of data total or 20 megabytes of data total, or whether we're looking at hundreds and hundreds of gigabytes a day flowing through uh, the tools scale uh, very well. We don't have to make these decisions and then either overbuy early on or design ourselves in the corner and then having to, uh, you know, rip out uh, everything later as the organization and the data involved, uh, involved grows. It comes back to think, think big and start small. Um, again, it's uh, we are living in fortunate times when where the tools are there. But literally, we can start from one use case and knowing that whatever we are building today is actually going to be part of a bigger solution. It's not just a prototype that we would have to um, that we would have to rip out uh, later. Time is everything. Um,
the speed of information is critical. Uh, so one of the things we are trying to do is really accelerate the time to value. Because, uh, okay, great, uh, we made a decision, we're building the BI, we have some, um, you know, POCs of, you know, what the business questions will be answered. And now nothing happens for the user for six months because um, a whole bunch of stuff which is not visible for them is happening at the end. Um, now, these are obviously a little bit of bigger projects. I'm not talking... Um, your very popular self BI, um, you know, one data source, two data, data sources. Let's create a quick, uh, let's create a quick dashboard. Uh, that is obviously uh, possible to do in a very, very short period of time. But as soon as you start bringing in, you know, data governance, as soon as you start bringing in what a, what a larger organization uh, requires, the time becomes even more important, yet it becomes more difficult to execute on that quickly mostly because incredible amount of time is spent on being things, uh, building things that don't need to be built because they're already available. Uh, so flexibility is the key. Time to value is the most important thing. Uh, the ability to try things to file fast um, uh, is paramount. And one thing I would sort of drive down is uh, really Having the technology work for you, not have, not having you working for the technology, is a is a big thing. So um, we ask, what can this do for us? Uh, whatever this is, but we very uh, very uh, often fail to ask, what do we need to do for it to enable that um, uh, you know that performance or enable that output. Um, whether it comes in form of, uh, you know, setup and integration, very often it comes in form of training of what is it, what, you know, what we need to do. All those things have a compounding effect on the time to value and obviously not a good one. If uh, we make a purchasing decision and, and the first thing we have to do is to train people um, to uh, use the tool or to be able to start making some design decisions of that, obviously any type of goalpost is just disappearing in the fog. Um, don't reinvent the wheel, you know, reuse, recycle, rinse and repeat wherever possible. Sometimes the, so the uh, solution might not be, you know, 100% of what you're looking for, but, uh, uh, you know, 90% quickly is better than 100% never. Security and governance. Um, a big important area, of course. Uh, one which uh, has been a little bit of odds with the new trends, uh, or former new trends in BI around uh, self uh, saying, hey, here is a business user, give them access directly to the data source and don't worry about everything. Uh, doesn't really scale, doesn't really work really well. Uh, the quality suffers, you know, a lot of people can have a very different interpretation of the same things in the business. There needs to be a little bit of rule put in the place. But on the other hand, that must not hinder the usability and the uh, um, value which the solution can bring to people. And this is a great example. Uh, I found that picture, uh, uh, picture quite funny. But it is a, it is a reality that quite often the governance requirements are so overblown that it completely hampers the ability of the project to actually deliver on the real business needs rather than just on some uh, on some vanity metrics. So a few, few takeaways. Um, fail safety is extremely important, meaning allow people to fail plan for failures, meaning the system has to be able to allow you to recover from these things because um, if you um, create way too many barriers, way too many safeguards, uh, the progress stops. We need to make sure that people can try things and in the case they can fail and it will not affect the project as a whole. Uh, that doesn't take away the need for audit 
uh, meaning we need to have a very, very good track of what is it, what people are doing, what they have done, uh, obviously to help investigate and to go back in things. And it's critical to understand roles of uh, different people and make sure that uh, whatever systems you're using are keeping people uh, within their area of, uh, of influence and supporting them, uh, giving them the right tools for that area of influence, of course, but uh, uh, keep it very, very defined of, um, in terms of your understanding of what is it that the particular person can affect uh, in the overall system. We see an incredible amount of uh, what I would call the, or could be called the do-it-yourself uh, models, right? Uh, to be fair, it is getting exceedingly easy or easier and easier to do things on your own. Um, you know, I can pull out a credit card and have a, you know, data warehouse spun up in minutes uh, with the parameters which, um, A, I wouldn't have a knowledge to set up on premise. Uh, or uh, B would take, uh, you know, weeks to set up and getting hardware and going through budget meetings uh, to justify the investment. Um, there are tons, tons and tons of tools uh, out there in the ETL space, which you can see, yeah, we can take this data source and, you know, uh, move it into this type of data warehouse or, uh, you know, connect these two APIs together. There's a plenty, plenty of that stuff there. So it gets quite um, seductive um, to be able to say, like, well, you know, we don't need to buy anything for this. We just get these couple of things and, you know, we have smart people uh, and, uh, you know, our data analysts who can use Python to write a couple of scripts or maybe we have a data engineer on the team. Um, and that's all good but it's missing several of the scalability and future proofness elements of the solution. Because yes, you will get things delivered. Uh, it might take a little longer because again, a lot of stuff will be built. Those people, even if they're seriously knowledgeable, are still limited in to your organization. Um, the you know, lateral thinking it does not always apply. Um, the compounded amount of mistakes uh, they made in the past uh, is uh, lower. <clears throat> and uh, the, when you have a proprietary system, you have a big problem, and that's the proprietary system. Uh, think uh, issues that people will change, the technologies underlying are going to change. You, are, you get yourself into this never-ending uh, uh, maintenance cycle um, of these things. Again, we've seen it again and again. We have customers come to us and say, well, we had the system, it was working for two years, it was great. Nobody worried about it because it's behind the scene and it's worked and suddenly we need to add these two things and the guy who built it is not there anymore and um, you know, we don't even know where the thing is running. When you're building things internally, especially under pressure of delivery because everybody wants to see the dashboards, um, you take the minimum viable approach almost every single time. Uh, so the features like audit trail, safe docu self documenting, uh, uh, the fail safe um, uh, environment are not going to get built until later. And later is usually very too late uh, to actually start thinking about that. And obviously the issue is with time to value. If you, if you can flip a switch, even though it might mean a financial outlay to a product or to a company which will help you do that, um, the intrinsic cost, both financial and um, opportunity, uh, gets very seldom put into the equation. I think that when you're going after vendors to do particular thing, you're asking them and say, hey, what is it what you're going to do for me? How much is that going to cost me? Um, the point is do the same thing to your internal teams and compare and say, so how much time is this going to take? How can you deliver on this? And effectively treat them the same because yes, uh, 
um, just went to a conversation with the customer when the their development team just took complete ownership of the over the project uh, some uh, some year ago because they were excited about it. It was actually something something new for them. Uh, and there lies the problem. It was new for them. So a year later, the customer still doesn't have what they wanted. They felt like they saved, you know, a few tens of thousands of dollars, but effectively they are, uh, you know, over a million dollars in, in the hole right now after we edit everything up, the time which went into that and the opportunity cost of what those people were supposed to be doing instead and, you know, where, where else it impacted the organization, especially when we were talking uh, you know, highly technically skilled people who are not exactly cheap and not exactly uh, plentiful on the market. So takeaways, don't build what you don't have to. Uh, focus on the unique, meaning build the stuff that is unique to you, that is helping to your business. Uh, you know, don't worry about integration with the particular API. There are so many things which can actually do this, do this for you. Um, uh, find a system that's going to provide the right platform for you to be able to plug the unique components that you that you're going to need, but it's going to provide everything else, shield the technology from it, and do that. And in the in the aspect, you know, operate within a community so you can avoid mistakes explored by others. Um, don't uh, try to you know invent everything yourself. Uh, think ahead. We're going back to the scalability, uh, uh, scalability thing, um, and uh, point of the data consumptions and what does it mean. Um, make sure that whatever you're putting in the place today can grow and most importantly can change. Um, your typical data warehouse projects start with a use case, uh, and that is uh, deadly. You basically are sentencing the organization for never-ending data um, warehouse reimagination and uh, rebuilding project. Um, Whether it is new types of data consumption which comes later, whether it is a change in business, uh, in the business principles, in the business model itself, all of this stuff is happening very, very quickly and obviously faster and faster uh, as we go. So future flexibility and where the product or where the technology which you are choosing today is heading is very often more important than what it actually is today. You might not find all features, but you know who is the organization behind it? Who are the people using it? Have they been places to which you are trying to go and you're trying to get? So can they sort of light the, the way for you? Do you have a confidence that when your need will evolve, that particular uh, platform or tool or company or consulting company is going to be there waiting for you when, when you get there with your business. Takeaways, requirements will change, people will change. Extremely, extremely important. You know, everything that gets uh, locked in brains of people today, again, especially when you have something like a DUI solution, the uh, DIY, it's uh, DIY. <laughs> that is um, uh, that is absolutely critical because the cost of recovery from changes then is uh, gets astronomical, and obviously the technologies will evolve. That's a good thing and that's a bad thing. It's a good thing because something that might be a problem today might not be problem in six months because there will be a you know new plugin or new functionality or um, or things like that. On the other hand, the technologies which interact with your project are going to change. You know, APIs are going to change. The uh, primary business systems get replaced, you know, switch from one CRM to another, from one financial to another, without actually uh, affecting the business, um, the desired business outcome. So built-in flexibility and make sure that there is, a, uh, there is a high level of confidence you have in the uh, solution evolving uh, going forward. And ultimately, 
you know, go cloud or go home. I uh, um, started uh, with on-premise systems, uh, like everybody, <laughs> almost. Um, the um, as much as the cloud gets still uh, a bad rep sometimes in the enterprise, it is the way uh, which the you know wagon is going. Um, the um, things which again which were issues a year ago or two years ago are not anymore. Um, the uh, cloud providers uh, have the best people in the world to deal with particular problems. Um, Things are possible in the cloud today, which are just not feasible anymore. It's extremely, extremely expensive. Uh, uh, the cloud in, in the data space is the answer why, why we can do today, uh, you know, in an afternoon, which took several months of projects um, just a few years um, earlier and maybe a year and millions of dollars, you know, a few years ahead. And obviously it's developing much, much faster than everything else. Uh, it comes back to the flexibility and the thinking ahead. You know, the cloud will be there ahead of you. Um, um, it is uh, is the way <laughs> of the future for sure. Don't uh, I had a I had a uh, talk for uh, TDWI. And the whole uh, the whole premise was, um, you know, how do we introduce cloud to our organization, uh, you know, without getting fired, because it's a big change and you know, big risk uh, for them. And I think that really this needs to be reversed. Uh, and that is not uh, into how to replace things, but what can cloud allow us to do today that we cannot uh, or wouldn't be able to do otherwise and start from those use cases, you know, embrace what the cloud is bringing to you uh, rather than uh, fight it or consider it a big monster coming. Take full advantage of it. Uh, careful about fake cloud, you know, I, uh, legacy uh, on-prem tool which are just clawing their ways into cloud and um, being presented just as a hosted solution as this, you know, big cloud thing. You know, true cloud means APIs, means collaboration, means uh, rapid development uh, of the tool, uh, means um, interconnectivity with, uh, with other things, means openness and extendability, and all of those, all of those things. Make sure you ask those questions and come back to that speed is critical. You can do things uh, in a cloud solutions where literally you'll be working on your data while somebody approaching uh, it the traditional way is having their first budget meeting to figure out what kind of infrastructure they actually need to purchase. And uh, uh, sort of the closing to this, you know, if there is a faster way of doing what you're doing, your competition will find it. These are business critical decisions with time being the most important uh, asset, very often overlooked, but it is ultimately what it comes to. Speed of the information, speed of information is critical and make sure that everything you're building on the back end uh, of, the, of the data prep uh, is, um, has that uh, in focus. I hope it wasn't too confusing. Uh, we have a few minutes for questions. I haven't seen any, any pop up. Uh, so please um, uh, use the question um, uh, blog there, uh, or we might all get an extra, type, extra few minutes for a coffee. I'll leave it up to you. Okay, I will start winding it down then. Don't uh, don't let it start if you have something uh, something last minute. Really, my intention today was to uh, I definitely ask more questions than uh, than I gave answers. And that is the point. Uh, my only uh, ambition here is to maybe present a point of view from which you will ask 
maybe slightly different questions the next time uh, you are embarking on the project. Uh, maybe you'll step back in the beginning a little bit and say, wait a minute, you know, instead of just solving this issue, instead of just getting data for this particular project, what is it, what this means for the business as a whole? Obviously, us living in the data prep space are a little bit biased, but we believe this is an incredibly underutilized asset within the organizations because imagine instead of just fulfilling the needs which are coming from the business, the data workbench is creative space. That's the space where you can find new truths, where you can find new ideas, uh, and actually deliver it to the business and say, hey, what if we did that? What if we looked at it this way? Um, uh, what if we used um, this process that part of the organization uh, has developed and we utilize it uh, somewhere else? Um, the data is where it all begins. It is the uh, sort of underlying structure, you know, it's the is the mine <laughs> behind the industry. It's where the raw materials uh, come from. But uh, in this space, very often, uh, it is it is a area where a lot of ideas uh, get created and a lot of uh, answers get found for uh, questions which nobody actually knew uh, to ask in the first place. All right. So with a few minutes to spare, uh, thanks everybody for uh, sticking around. I hope this gave you something. Uh, my contacts are on the bottom of the screen here. Please feel free to reach out with any questions offline or thereafter. I would love to uh, hear your feedback and uh, maybe we'll virtually meet again in the uh, future. Thank you very much and uh, have a great rest of your day.